Today we'll be going through a character build for a Tomb Warden, a character designed to deal with undeads and the necropolises they hide in. Hi, I'm Yovel and I will be going through core features of the build and discuss the decisions why they were chosen. We are starting with a dwarf that is of Parmen ethnicity. In law terms, they are located in the nation of Assyrian, Galarian's equivalent of Egypt. Parmet dwarves are known to live near necropolises and pyramids that house all sorts of mummies and related undeads. Thus, the Death Warden heritage was chosen as they would have been naturally exposed to the negative energies. The first ancestry feat is stone cunning. As mentioned before, necropolises in Assyrians are pyramids, and what are they generally made of? Stone. Hence, stone cunning would be an appropriate feature to learn as a dwarf. And the added bonus of discovering traps or secrets in stonework means that there is an added insurance of additional safety when spelunking. At 5th level, we are looking at Death Warden Glare to give extra hurt to undead creatures, further weakening their tools to hurt you and your party. And Stonewalker at 9th level. The mill to stone could be used in all sorts of situations such as ambushing, hiding, and reconnaissance, or a myriad of other tactical choices. The added boost to perception with stonework is also helpful as our class does not reach legendary perception proficiency in its progression. Raised by Belief was chosen as I felt it was thematically appropriate especially when living near an accursed place teeming with undeads. Especially with the teachings of Phrasma and her belief to destroy undeads and release their souls. This helped focus the drive and the resilience to why this character would commit their life to destroying undeads. It's a dangerous and stressful job that many who may not have any ambition or reason wouldn't find themselves pursuing this creature for the long term. Also with Raised by Belief and a follower of Phrasma, we get trained in the medicine skill which would be helpful in situations that healing or resources are limited. The class that was chosen is a Barbarian, and I have gone with the Spirit Instinct. This instinct is particularly useful with combating undeads at level 1, as getting access to positive or negative energy and able to fully harm incorporeal creatures can make some particularly frustrating monsters easier to deal with. The static damage may seem low compared to the hard-hitting instincts such as the giant instinct, but most early level undeads are weak to positive energy, and the additional damage from the weakness can boost the overall speed at removing the enemy hit point pool. Blanket resistance to all attacks from undead creatures may seem to be a small amount, especially at the level you receive the ability, but fortunately it is part of the rage feature, and the reduction of damage will help, especially in combination with some other class feats to further extend the barbarian's already large hit point pool. Sudden Charge helps with the Dwarf's 20 foot movement speed. Able to move twice and take a swing with an action to spare helps in covering some limitations, especially in the early levels. It's a bit unfortunate that it can only be used at the start of the turn due to its open trait. No Escape is to help with preventing enemies slipping past you and trying to get to the back line or withdrawing from combat especially since most enemies would have a 25 foot movement speed and that extra 5 foot distance can lead to wasting another move action to get into reach during your next turn. Fast movement is the answer to the previous two band-aid solutions. The boost to 30 foot movement means that sudden charge is a lot more effective and no escape will minimize even less wasting of actions when dealing with slippery foes. Attacks of opportunity are when movement and positioning are no longer an issue and it's more keeping enemies from doing their nasty abilities such as spell casting and to punish those who just move around. Renewed Vigor is a small sustain in combat, primarily an option when you have an action left with no other suitable choices. The temporary hit points do help barbarians extend further their effectiveness in combat, especially in the front lines. Furious Sprint would be a fun way to tackle traps that you might find in dungeons such as a rolling boulder, or in the rare combats where the enemy is on the other side of a large battlefield. Spirit Wrath is a unique option for the Barbarian as it gives them a 120 foot range attack. In combat, the need for a range of this size would be due to opponents flying, and options such as a fly spell are limited. Ground targets would be easier to close in from previous Barbarian feats. 
Otherwise, while looking impressive at first, this feat has specific situations such as a ghost flying in the middle of a room. Overall, this gives the Barbarian a backup plan where melee combat is not an option. Whirlwind Strike is most likely your bread and butter skill when you unlock it. Given the ability to hit all targets within reach at your highest bonus will significantly help with dealing with a horde situation. There are instances where you would still have a fourth action left to make another hit at minus 5 or 10 penalty, and that would include spells such as haste. In combination with a reach weapon, this would be more effective as you would be able to hit more targets. We are now looking into skills that would benefit this character in their adventuring career. Learning Acrobatics would enable the Tomb Warden to deftly avoid scenarios where the dungeon floor is collapsing or safely traversing a narrow edge over a room full of spikes. Likewise, Athletic is another option where finesse and grace is not required, and instead of a room of spikes, it's a pit of spikes. Jumping that distance or moving and opening hidden doors would benefit the Tomb Warden when exploring the pyramid. Crafting is to assist with maintaining gear and equipment. While this Tomb Warden build does not use the shield, this option is to help support the party, as well as the craft skill helps identify items and objects that one may come across while adventuring. A lot of undeads have nasty effects, from ghouls with their paralysis and other disease-ridden creatures. In addition to treating wounds from combat, the added bonus from recovering from poisons and disease will be helpful, as who knows what forgotten plague remains kept in a tune for untold centuries. And lastly, religion as to deal with undeads. It would be good to know about the creatures that you encounter, whether they are the frustrating shadows, mummy lords in their ilk, or basic zombie shamblers. It's always good to know their strengths and weaknesses so they can be dealt with quickly. Now we'll be talking about equipment. I will only be talking about weapons and armor today, as the Tomb Warden is a combat focused class, and the wondrous items available at the moment only focus to improve specific skills or have a more magical focus. The Meteor Hammer is a two handed bludgeoning reach weapon. The reach helps synergizes with Whirlwind Strike and also helps at lower levels where mobility is a concern, and most enemies having 25 foot movement opposed to the duel's 20 foot movement. Bludgeoning damage is always good with undeads, as there are some who have resistances to slashing and piercing damage, namely the skeletons. Backswing is a bonus trait where if the first attack misses, the second attack has a plus one to hit. And finally we are equipping our Tomb Warden with the Breastplate, giving us as much AC as possible going forwards. As this is a martial class, the armor check penalties will be mitigated by ability scores and increasing proficiencies as we progress through the levels. With that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, leave a like and comment on your thoughts. Till next time.